Growing up for me, I was always the weird kid. Like I was the kid who brought my Bible to school. I was like always talking about church, church events, or Jesus. And so I was always that weird kid. I never really fit in at all. So for me, the world is a very strange place and it always has been. I don't understand people who wanna go party or sleep around or do drugs and stuff like that. I just don't get it. It was never part of my personality. It was never part of who I was. Maybe I was too sheltered as a kid. I don't know, but I don't know. It just was never part of who I wanted wanted to be. So I saw this video recently from Emily Radajkowski. I cannot say her last name, Emily Radajkowski. And she, I believe is like some sort of model or something, but there's this TikTok video that she brought out recently that really got me thinking about the biblical understanding of marriage and how the world thinks about marriage today. For example, the caption of this video is called personally, I find it chic to be divorced by the age of 30. So let's listen to what Emily has to say, and uh, we'll talk about it from a biblical point of view. Here we go. So it seems that a lot of ladies are getting divorced before they turn 30. And as someone who got married at 26, has been separated for a little over a year, 32, I have to tell you, I don't think there's anything better. If being in your 20s is the trenches, there is nothing better than being in your 30s, still being hot, maybe having a little bit of your own money, figuring out what you want to do with your life, everything, and having tried that married fantasy and realizing that it's maybe not all it's cracked up to be, and then you've got your whole life still ahead of you. Um, so for all of those people who are stressed or feeling stressed about that, about being divorced, like it's, a, it's, it's good. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, so oh, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I've got some issues with this one for sure. We're going to dive into plenty of biblical moments in order to talk through this. However, obviously, th this is something that's crazy to me coming from a Christian point of view. She's saying that not only is it is it chic to be divorced by 30, but it's actually a great thing because in your 20s, you're in the trenches. In your 20s, you know, you're married to this, this, this ball and chain that's following you around and ruining your life. But then when you get divorced, you're free and you're able to do whatever you want. And, and at first I was like, this lady has to be crazy, right? Like she has to be alone in this thinking. But the more I looked into it, if we look at these comments over to the right, let's read some of these. Uh, Stephanie says, divorced at 30 is the best. <laughs> the one of that says, married at 27. What am I, a child bride? Skip divorce by never getting married in the first place. And that's why you don't get married in your 20s. Cheers, uh, uh, cheers to the girlies who stayed single in their 20s and you know what's up. It's like when you hit 30, you wake up. Met the love of my life on tour at 23, married at 25, and 31 years later, still married. We are in the same field, so that helps. So someone is on the same page, right? They're like, no, I, no, it's good to be, good to be married. <laughs> and then a lot of people are definitely just like at the same level that she is. This person, Vane, says, also married at 26, divorced at 28, best decision ever. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> I got divorced at 52 last year. I'm living my best life. Yikers, um, 31 and getting divorced honestly feels so much shame about it, but this did genuinely make me feel better. There's a lot of things kind of going on here. Married at 29, divorcing at 31, Usa feeling so free. Okay, ton of comments. I, I can't help but just feel horrible for the people that have this mindset, right? Marriage is something that God created, right? The reason why so many people are getting divorced is because they don't understand that. They don't understand that God is a, poor, is a part of this marriage, right? It has to be. Otherwise, it's not a marriage. It's just two people getting together. Marriage has to be between God. It's a God-ordained thing that happens. So if you don't have God in your marriage, it just it's never going to work. It's never going to be a proper marriage. And, and most of the time, it's going to fall apart. So let's go into some biblical understanding of what marriage is and how we can navigate this as well. Um, the first one, if you're liking this video so far and you want to continue to see us making videos like this, then we could really use your help on patreon.com. This is the best way to help support us with five, 10, 25, or even $50 a month if you really, really want to. But honestly, this is what keeps us going because sometimes YouTube, well, just doesn't show our videos to people or it kind of is blocked in the algorithm for whatever reason. So we could really use your help if you want to support us right here on The Snipe Life. Well, um, the first one being, of course, from Genesis. And I hate how this is like a little bit off here. 
Let me kind of go like that. Uh, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Of course, this is really important. As you're married, you cannot just be yourself anymore. You have to be with your your wife, right? You have to be with your husband and become one flesh, live life together. Um, That's huge for sure. Again, we see the same thing in Mark chapter 10, but this is from Jesus's lips. There's a reason um, that that he does this here. So let's read this. Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. Again, he's, he's referencing that scripture in Genesis, right? And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. And therefore God has, and what, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate, right? Um, and so this is obviously talking through that whole situation there. We see in Hebrews chapter 13, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So he's telling us where the marriage should be held, right? What level of standard this marriage should be held to. And of course, there's many, many, many scriptures in the Bible that talk about this standard and where it should be. Proverbs 18, 22. Let me zoom into this one again. He says, uh, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay. That's great. Again, it's showing that marriage is a good thing. It's an honoring thing. It's a blessed thing that's happening here. Again, this is a a verse that we've heard many, many, many times at at weddings and such, right? It says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So that's a huge thing, right? And of course, we continue on in that verse there. We've read it a million times at weddings, <laughs> um, but we see another one here. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness. What accord has Christ with Belial and what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever. This is a huge, huge thing as well, right? When we're talking about who we're going to marry, who we're going to date, make sure that they are equally yoked because if they are not Uh, under the same understanding of Christ and Jesus and God, then it's going to be a big, big issue in your relationship and it's going to cause you a lot of turmoil. Now, the last one that I wanted to look at here, of course, is Proverbs 31. An excellent wife, who can find? She is more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. I think this verse in particular is so, um, it's so against all the comments that we just read, right? So against the video that we just watched. Marriage to me is, um, it's sacred. It's beautiful. It's divine. And so in all of that, like this one right here, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. If you're thinking about, if you're thinking about, oh, I'll just get married in my twenties and then I'll I'll get divorced in my thirties, and that's a cool thing. Um, that's the epitome of of hurting the person that you're with. In so many ways, but but this to me is like it's just unacceptable. This to me is is where a lot of the world is going, where they're seeing these relationships as a burden instead of something to be built up and grown over time. You're seeing marriage as something that you should just get from all the time. Get, 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 instead of building it up and and, and building something that is beautiful. So to me, it's like, this is super annoying. (laughs) Like it, it frustrates me so much to hear someone talk about something that God has made and just spit on it. You have no understanding of marriage. You have no understanding of true love and relationship. And that's because you lack an understanding of who God is and his role in all of it as well. Being divorced at 30 is not chic. It's sinful. You know, albeit there there are uh, extra circumstances, right? Where a divorce may need to occur. And even Jesus said that. However, 
generally, <laughs> if you're just living your life and you're tired of your partner, no, being divorced at 30 is not chic. It's horrible. I don't know how much more I have to say about this. I thought those Bible verses did a pretty good job, but I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Uh, are you on board with the, the divorce by 30 trend? Uh, are we going to see more divorces rising up and rising up in my generation and the next? I don't know. I really hope that's not the case, but the world is going to do what the world wants to do, I suppose. 